welcome back to the Sisters of Jump. You're all staying safe and well. Another FA Cup years feature as we've got, uh, yeah, we prepare to meet Newcastle in the quarterfinals of the 23-24 FA Cup on the 16th of March 2024. Yeah, we're just going to have a look back at uh, City against Newcastle. A special emphasis on the games played. Well, they were all played at main role, the ones we're looking at today. So we're going to have a look at uh, City versus Newcastle. The FA Cup years. In total, we've met Newcastle in the FA Cup 11 times. Yeah, they've got uh, a big advantage over us at the moment. Uh, we've met them three times at home, seven away, and one, of course, at Wembley in the final itself. One of those home games, actually, we were drawn away at uh, St James's Park, but it was ordered to be played at Main Road due to crowd problems at St James's the previous season. Our record for those 11 games, 1-3, drawn 2 and lost 6. So not great. we scored 14, let 18 in. Uh, we're at home in this one, so as I said, we'll have a look at the three home games, all played at Main Road. And yes, I wasn't born for one of them, but I was there for the other two, so we'll have a look at those. Please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications, everything. City past, present, and as long as I can keep going, so please join me. Let us know your memories, especially on any of these games, guys. Even the old game, if you were there, and you're even, even older than old me, so uh, do that. It'd be great to hear if you have a respond or give you a like. If that's all it requires and please you can give me a like and give City a like and give Newcastle a like and give me a little thumbs up, it'd be much appreciated. Yep, the first meeting was in a third round replay on the 9th of January 1957, four days after a 1-1 draw at St James's Park. Uh, Bobby Johnston, the City scorer for that one. City were the current FA Cup holders. Newcastle beat us in the previous season's final, of course. So it's a, a meeting between the last two FA Cup winners. The Wednesday 2pm afternoon replay went to extra time at Main Road and it was a nine-goal thriller. Uh, sadly, City losing out by the odd goal in the nine in a thrilling contest. There's some great footage, actually, from PATH uh, Television, uh, black and white. I'll put links below uh, in the comments uh, for that one, some uh, actual showing all the goals scored all night. I think all nine goals are there. I've had a quick look, look through, looks like it. The programme of the day cost threatens, which is one and a half P in today's money. The standard, as it was then for the season, artists in Pressure of Main Road uh, from the, with the sort of covered main stand, of course, a covered plat lane, but of course, uh, Kipax and the scoreboard open. The lineup cities Les McDowell City, Troutman Leavers, Little Barnes, Ewing, Paul Fagan, McAdams, Johnson. Johnston, Dyson and Clark, Doug Livingstone's Newcastle, Simpson, Keith, Batty, Sculler, Stoko, Casey, White, Davis, Tate, Curry, Mitchell. I believe Sculler was one of those, uh, a bit like our Roy Paul, a bit of, bit of a legend up in uh, Newcastle. Uh, we were comfortably winning this one, the third round cup replay 3-0, but an early penalty in the second half prompted a spirited fight back by Newcastle, but mainly thanks to the inspiration that gentleman has just mentioned. After 86 minutes, the scores were level at 3-3. We made it 4-3 in the added extra time, but the Magpies ended up winning 5-4 despite a player down. Yeah, they, they lost Dick Keith in the second half at normal time, so they did incredibly well uh, in in. in Tough conditions as they always were in those days. A crowd of 46,988 witnessed the amazing match. Basil Norton, a well-known journalist at the time, waxed lyrical about the game in a piece republished in the Newcastle vs City match day programme the 27th of September 2023 in the feature called Tales from the Archive. This is uh, what he said about the game. This, my friends, was the greatest cup tie of my time. My hand still shakes with the excitement as I write. I have seen 24 cup finals, but thrills for thrills, drama, excitement, with nine goals thrown in, this goes to the top of the list. Women shrieked, strong men turned pale as Newcastle United tonight back fought back to a memorable triumph after being three down at half time to send their hysterical fans mad six minutes from time with th with a 3 free equaliser and the drown was far from finished extra time followed United's leveller and those additional 30 minutes were just as spectacular City quickly regained the lead to make it 4-3 when Bobby Johnston netted then enter Lem White on 104 minutes the Magpie's stocky Yorkshireman was sent away by Reg Davis and in a chase with Roy Little latched onto a weak back pass ahead of keeper Troutman scored with a sharply angled shot all square once more at 4-4 then just as the half ended White grabbed what was the winner United were awarded a free kick 
Tommy Casey flighted a dangerous delivery into the box as City defenders watched the ball. White nipped in to strike them close in. Pictured, pictured, there's a picture up there of that one. Yet there was still still time for the citizens to strike the pulse through Jackie Dyson. United's Bob Stark or remote. Bob Stoke all remarks after the whistle. I couldn't even remember the score. I was so excited. Of course, he went on to be very famous as the uh, Sunderland manager, didn't he, Bob Stoke? Stan Seymour was stunned. It was a stupendous tie. City boss Les McDowell said, We've no grumbles. It was a wonderful game. The crowd at Main Road couldn't quite believe what they had just witnessed. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't there, but uh, yeah, sounds, sounds a cracker, doesn't it? The scorers for City that day were uh, Johnson got a couple, Fagan, and of course that, uh, Bob Stoko own goals. And said the legend, future Sunderland legend, of course. For Newcastle, White got two, Casey, Tate, and Curry. Newcastle then just went on to lose at Millwall in the next round, two one. So uh, not great. The next time, the next main role match uh, were better for us. Yeah, again a replay this time in the fourth round. City had gained a nil-nil draw in the first match four days earlier, on the 29th of January 1969. My dad and I were in the plat lane for that, that game in a crowd of 60,844. Got no fans or so, have we? For a 2 0 City win, the first time we'd beaten Newcastle in the FA Cup. The programme featured debuting Johnny Hart and Bert Troutman on the cover and cost a princely sum of one shilling or 5p to the likes of you and me. Lineups that day, Mercer and Allison City, Dowd, Buck, Pardo, Doyle, Booth, Oak, Summerby, Owen, Lee, Young and Coleman, Sub Dave, Connor and Joe Harvey's Newcastle, McFall, Craggs, Frank Clark, uh, Gib, Burton, Moncur, Dyson, Brian Pop Robson of course, uh, Davis, Scott, Foggan and their sub was a guy called Elliot. Journalist Matt John Maddox shared his memories of the game in the City vs Blackpool 3rd of February 88 match day programme in his feature entitled Flashback. So we'll just have a quick read of that. The replay, there was, uh, there was a, obviously this was the replay. Over 60,000 crowded into Main Road and the air filled with same, the same excitement and tension as the previous game. There were gas really on when Harry Dow threw the ball out towards Mike Doyle and it was intercepted by Brian Pop Robson who only just cleared the bar with a fine effort. Then came a magnificent goal, majestic in its build-up, deadly in its finish. David threw out to Lee, who headed it to Owen. The ex player unerringly dispatched it to Neil Young, and he loped forward before sending a powerful shot past McFall. It was almost 2-0 when a Summerby shot ricocheted off the legs of John Craggs, but McFall smothered the ball. Then Keith Dyson was so flabbergasted when an Alan Oaks back header landed in front of him that he could only deliver the ball tamely into Dowd's grateful hands. Lee then shuddered, shuddered a post with a free kick when Owen was just failing to tuck away the rebound. The time siders pour forward after the interval, Robson hitting the city bar and Jim Scott shooting just the wrong side of the post. They were well served in their assault in the second half by Robson, Bobby Munker and Tommy Gibb, the latter having an outstanding game in the, in his, in the first encounter. But to no avail, the youthful Tommy Booth outlet win the Leap Davis and Tony Buck organised the defence as a whole it was his usual with the whole of his usual wisdom. The goal that settled it came after 68 minutes and it was another memorable one. Lee flicked a young pass over his head to Bobby Owen who apparently lost control, regained it and then hit home an accurate shot just to seal the tie. That really was that. Both teams now knew that the final outcome was inevitable. For Newcastle there would be another chance the following season. For City there was a fifth round tie at Blackburn. Another step towards the ultimate Wembley triumph that season, of course. Uh, we would go on to lift the FA Cup, as I'm sure you all know, 1-0 beating Leicester City. The final meeting, not successful, though it was played at Main Road, was actually officially an away fixture, as I mentioned early on. Newcastle had been ordered, Newcastle had been ordered to play at Main Road after crowd trouble the previous season. Newcastle didn't let it bother them though, taking a 2-0 win away from Main Road. This time I was in the Kipax. The crowd, an estimated 37,625. Uh, yeah, estimates say there was 10,000 Geordies. Uh, there was a lot. Uh, there certainly was a lot, I remember that. But uh, if there's only if there's 10,000 Geordies, only 27,000 City fans. Bit, bit dubious on that one, so perhaps someone was fiddling figures somewhere. This, took, of course, took uh, place... 
on the 4th of January 1975 on the program cover was Asa Hartford and the program cost uh, yeah uh, a very expensive 10p uh, lineups that day Tony Buck City Corrigan Hammond Donicky Horsewell Doyle Oaks Barnes Belmarsh Hartford and Tewart our sub was Henson he came on in the 65th minute Joe Harvey's Newcastle in his last season there he did came, come back temporarily in 1980 for uh, just for a short time but this was his last full season but for Paul Natras, Kennedy Craig, Keeley Howard, Burns Smith, McDonald Tudor and Nulty, their sub was Clark. For a Geordie take on the game, a little bit, I won't say biased, but obviously they've got a lead towards their lot. Uh, we're going over to the Newcastle versus City programme from the 19th of February 1995. And a match report in a piece they called Flashback as well. And it went on to say... Only once in Newcastle United's long history have they been forced to play a home match on their opponent's ground. It happened in January 1975 when we were drawn at home to Manchester City in the FA Cup first round, third round. But because of FA sanctions following the crowd invasion of the previous season's quarter final against Forest, it was a shocker that one. The tie went to main road. There were some shockers in those days, but that certainly was. Such was the support of Joe Harvey's side that more than 10,000 Geord more than 10,000 according to them, uh, Geordie's fans made the trip to Manchester and they were rewarded in glorious fashion when United pulled off a magnificent 2-0 victory over City's team of all-stars. Rarely has a Newcastle pride been carried so bravely as on that wintry day when goals from Mickey Burns and Jeff Nolte in the space of a minute in the second half tipped the balance United's way. It was victory commando style, repelling the enemy, then stealing it to inflict a mortal wound before retreating again. And manager Harvey said, we fought like hell. Uh, I was proud of them all. Goalkeeper Willie McFall was the hero of the hour, making save after save. A city poured forward, especially in the first half. None came better than a breathtaking stop from a Colin Bell blockbuster in the 35th minute. A save which prompted city manager Tony Butt to say, at that point, however, I had an idea it wasn't going to be our day. A second superlative save from Dennis Stewart two minutes later confirmed Buck's fears and 15 minutes after the interval they were realised in full as United's twice plunged the commando knife deep into Manchester hearts. First Malcolm McDonnell raced onto John Tudor's pass down the right flank and curved in across towards Nulty. Nulty's attempted scissor kick didn't come off but the ball felt ideally for a lurking Burns to crack an instant volley past Joe Corrigan. If that brought joy to the travelling holds there was unbridled ecstasy a minute later as Donald released a brilliant through ball for Nulty to go past Asa Hartford and strike a stunning shot past Corrigan. It was a perfect answer for McDonald, who had been ridiculed as a glorified fullback by City's Rodney Marsh before the game. And with England manager Don Revy in the stand, it paved the way for further England caps for this guy. At 0 2, City pushed extra men forward, but the balance of the game has shifted Newcastle's way. In the final half hour, Corrigan had to make fine saves from the marauding McDonald. It was left to the delighted Harvey to give the final words of praise. City played well, he said, for an hour, but we showed tremendous spirit in containing them said the Newcastle Supremo, who little knew that defeat at Walsall, yeah, in the next round, typical, uh, would herald the end of his 13-year tenure at St James's Park. Harvey also handed out praise to McFall, saying, I felt he was out of this world. What an inspiration he was. Yeah, City manager Tony Buck said himself our FA Cup exit was a sad blow. He praised the performance as well of McFall in the Newcastle goal. City report Peter to Gardner backed up the assessment in his piece for the match day programme against Newcastle again uh, a couple of weeks later on the 18th of January 1975 uh, for the league match. Uh, in his opposition profile he said... Now consider the FA Cup tie earlier this month when Newcastle, very much the underdogs, returned to Tyneside with a 2-0 passport to round four, forced to play at Main Road because of an FA ban that stopped them playing on their own ground. A hangover from last season's crowd riots at the Gallagate. United were playing off the park, off the park for an hour, but City were denied by an incredible display from goalkeeper Ian McFall. Out of this world was how Newcastle boss Joe Harvey described the performance of his Irish international keeper, who four times made spectacular saves before his side had even looked like scoring. Even when the Magpies were two up, McFall still defied City. Unluckiest blue of all was Colin Bell. Three times he saw McFall stop efforts that were worthy of goals. It's one of the finest displays of goalkeeping I've seen on this ground for a long time. In fact, I would go as far as to say it was the best display since Gordon Banks played City almost single-handedly three years ago. Yeah, of course, uh, 
A lot of people say it was Rodney Marsh that lost us a title uh, in that season, three three seasons before. We ended up finishing fourth from being top and looking sure to win it. But uh, uh, the, the visit of Stoke City and a defeat for City to Main Road with Gordon Banks in the Stoke goal, I'd, I'd more to say on that, I think, than the, the Rodney Marsh uh, vibe. So uh, yeah, that was Peter Gardner again. Uh, McFall coming in for a lot of lot of praise. He summed up in the game. He summed up the game writing for the Football Pink on that evening. He said two goals in three minutes sent City's cup hopes crashing in a classic at Main Road. Mickey Burns, one hundred seventy five thousand from Blackpool, put the skids under City after sixty one minutes. And newcomer Jeff Nulty, one hundred twenty thousand from Burnley last month, put Newcastle firm in the driving seat with the second after sixty three minutes. What a tragedy for the Blues who had been in command throughout, but constantly denied by the brilliance of Ian McFall. He saved superbly from Belchew and Marsh at the height of City Siege in a full-bloody clash where both sides committed themselves to an attacking, attacking aggressive policy. Marsh worked tirelessly to earn a vital breakthrough but again he, this did not seem City's day. Doyle had another magnificent match against the always dangerous Malcolm McDonald but on this occasion the menace came from elsewhere with City paying the penalty in full. As already mentioned, yes, they would go uh, to Walsall next Newcastle and get beat 1-0 there. So uh, another, another bit of a waste of time. Uh, in the league at Main Road, that game we just mentioned, uh, that, that uh, Peter Gardner thing was from, on the 18th of January 1975, we stuffed them 5-1 yeah, in front of 32,021. I don't think there was 10,000 Geordies there at that one. There you go, guys. Hope you enjoy this little look back. At City versus Newcastle, the FA Cup years, and uh, just shares your memories. Yeah, were you one of those Geordies, the, the ten thousand plus? As I say, I, th I think there's a certainly plenty of. Uh, I just if there was ten thousand Geordies, I thought there must have been thirty-seven thousand City fans, not twenty-seven thousand. Hey, who knows? Who knows? Uh, we all we all uh, believe what we believe, don't we? And without tickets and stuff like this, where you pay to get in, perhaps and stuff, it's always hard to tell, wasn't it? Let us know your thoughts. Anyway, your memories. Great to hear from you. And uh, we'll look forward to the, the next meeting, of course. Thanks for watching. Until we meet again, uh, I only have one thing to say. Please stay safe, Blues. And come on, City. Bye for now.